All right, so this is the application that we are going to create today. It's going to be utilizing the Spotify API as well as using WPF. There might be a picture of a cat. I don't know. We'll see. Before we getting started, could you please consider subscribing? It really helps out the channel. Thanks. All right, so starting off, you want to pull up Visual Studio. You want to create a new project. We're going to search for WPF. Select the first one, which says C Sharp, Windows, and Desktop. Click Next. Give it a name. I'm going to call this not Spotify net six and create so once the project actually opens there are a couple of things that i do in order to get started i first go ahead and click the vertical split at the bottom right as we see right here and then in the solution explorer i create a couple of folders i'll start with one called mvvm the next one's going to be called model next one's going to be view and the last one's going to be view model i then group these under mvvm and there we go all right, now that that's done, we can actually start working on the UI. Let's start by changing the height to, I don't know, something like 800. The width is going to be about 450, not 4,500, but 450. Changing the background to something like uh, 222222. Window style is going to be none. Resize mode is going to be no resize. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, that's not good design architecture, etc., etc. You know what? We're going to move on. Changing this grid into a dock panel. You know what? I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger for you so you can actually see what's going on. I'm going to add a grid in here, just like that. Let's give it a property of dock panel dock equals to top. Inside the grid, we want to create a image. Let's self-close that one. Change the height to about 225. We're going to add a source as well. We're not going to add it just yet, but we're going to add source. Opacity is going to be 0.3. Uniform to, I mean, <laughs> stretch is going to be uniform to fill. Now the image that I'm adding is going to be in the description below. I don't know why I picked the one. It looked nice. If you have a better one, then by all means, feel free to use it. Underneath the image, we're going to add a stack panel. Vertical alignment is going to be bottom. There we go. Margin at about 8. We're going to be adding three text blocks in here. So let's start with the first one, text block. Text is going to be playlist, all capitalized. Foreground is going to be white. Font size. Let's see, there we go. Font size is going to be about 14. Font weight is going to be medium. We can actually copy that one. Add another one right there. This one's going to be called daily drive. Change the font size to about 44. There we go. And the font weight is going to be bold. And the last one is going to be, let's see, it's going to say a mix of news and music. Oh, I can't even spell music made for you. Let's change the foreground to light gray. Font size, about 12-ish. And the font weight is going to be bold. Now it all looks super messed up. Don't worry, it's going to fix itself. All right, so underneath the grid that we created, we're going to create a stack panel. There we go. Now the stack panel, we're going to set a background of uh, 25, 25, 25 ish. Yeah, it looks good. We're going to do scroll viewer, can content scroll. We're going to set that to false. All right, here comes the uh, styling. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move the main window to the view folder. Click OK. Doing that is going to make it to where you can't actually run the application. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into app.saml and change the startup URL or URI to uh, dot slash MVVM slash view slash. And that should be it. Try running the application and we can see it run. We can collapse that one. Let's create a new folder. Call it theme. So we're going to create a new folder. Call it theme. We're going to add a new resource dictionary. We'll call this theme name dot list view theme. Now you can replace the theme name with your theme name. So it could be like payload dot list view theme dot saml. All right, so let's start by creating a style. We're going to set the target type to be list view. There we go. We got to give it a key. So X key It's going to be called list style. Inside here, we want to create two setters. So setter, property, and the first one's going to be for the foreground. It's going to be value white, self-close. We're going to add another one. Border thickness is going to be zero. 
zero there we go we're then going to create a setter property and the property is going to be item container style self-close that or not self-close but we're going to actually open it up then the setter dot value we're going to close that one as well we're going to add a style in here as well there we go target type list view item we're going to do a setter property template close that one as well another setter dot value and we're just going to add a control template we'll do target type list view item and we'll add a content presenter we can self close uh, self close that one all right moving on to the item template so we're going to do setter property item uh, template close that one as well we'll do setter value there we go close it and we'll add a data template in here so data template add a doc panel we'll add a margin of about four we're gonna give it a name we'll do background border we might not need to set a name here it depends if we decide to go that route we'll see we'll add a doc panel dot style and we'll add a style of course set a target type of doc panel we'll do style oh style dot triggers the first trigger is going to be uh let's see we'll do property is mouse over value Ooh, not validation but value true we'll do setter property background and we'll do a value of like 30 30 30. now whenever we hover over when we enter the mouse like when we enter the the item template with the mouse or the cursor it's going to change the background color now, in order for that to work, we also need to set a default value. So if we're not hovering over, aka if the property is false, setter, uh, no, we'll do a trigger, I mean, sorry. Property is mouse over, value, not validation, but value, false, close that one. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do setter, property, background but this time is going to be transparent so value transparent there we go now underneath the solid trigger let's add a data trigger uh actually we still want to be inside triggers so we'll add a data trigger here we go Pro uh, well actually it's not property it's binding binding relative source open that up relative source again mode find ancestor target no ancestor type no target type ancestor type we'll open that up we'll do x type uh oop x type and it's going to be a list box yeah list box item and stepping two steps to the right comma adding a path is selected we actually remove one of these we have one too many value <laughs> not validation value true there we go might be a little bit more easier to read in here we just want to do a simple setter property pro property background value let's set it to like um, 30 30 30 self close that and uh, yeah it's looking good so far we can go ahead and remove the the name here let's clean this up a bit there we go underneath the doc panel style we'll add an image we'll self close that We'll do, Im uh, I mean, source, binding, and we don't really have anything to bind it to just yet because we haven't called the API and whatnot, but we will in just a sec. As for now, we can just set the width to 50 and the height to 50. We'll do doc panel, doc to the left. Then we'll create a stack panel. We'll set a margin of, let's see, this is going to be from the left, so it's going to be 4000. Zero, zero, zero. We'll do a text block self-close that text is also going to be bound so we'll do binding as of right now foreground oh foreground is going to be white font size is going to be about 14 font weight is going to be let's do medium should be fine 
followed by a text block and there we go self close that text again uh binding the binding here we go foreground is going to be about i think gray should be fine light gray gray uh gray should be fine and we'll do the font size uh 14 here as well then we'll add a grid underneath the stack panel where the horizontal alignment is going to be to the right vertical alignment is going to be center Let's do a, a, a margin of, let's see, so it's going to be 0, 0, 8, 0, giving it some space on the right. And in here, we'll add a text block, which uh, will do uh, text binding, uh, not text, it's going to be duration. That's going to show the actual, like, duration, like, the dummy duration of the, the, the length of the song. Font weight, medium. And for ground, it's going to be gray. Gray. There we go. All right. So moving back into the main window, if we look at it right now, it's obviously going to look just the same because we haven't populated it with any data just yet. That's what I think it will do right now before we move on to actually styling the scroll bar as well, which is going to be the last step. Right. So heading over to the page that I'm showing you right now, link will be in the description. This is going to be the API that we will be working with. It's the official Spotify developer api and it's actually pretty cool so we're going to start off by clicking get token you don't have to fill in anything here you just make sure that you're logged in if you're not then it's going to ask you to log in just click request token it's going to check if it's your account you're just going to have to click agree and it's going to generate a auth token for you that being said click fill sample data and then you can click try it scrolling down we can see that it has a lot of data here on the right hand side what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and copy everything that's in here all right so once at the top we're just going to copy that then we're going to head over to this page right here called quicktype.io. Link will be in the description. Click open quicktype. Then we're going to head over to this page right here called quicktype.io. Link will be in the description. Click open quicktype. We're going to paste everything right in there. Instead of welcome, it's going to be called track model, just like that. Now, if yours has a lot of things at the bottom, you want to head over to other and turn off detect enums. Then go ahead and select all the way from over here down to here and it should be about 110 lines once that's copied we can head back into the project right click model add class we're going to call it track model remove this part paste it in right there and we're going to have a few errors because we haven't actually added the nuget package that we need in order for this to work so we're going to head into tools nuget package manager manage nuget packages for solution and it should be the first one but in case it doesn't show up right here you can just search for json json click it select it install okay go back into the model alt enter and you should be able to add the correct namespace well, let's create the main view model so right click view model add class i'm going to call this main view model inside here we're going to create a constructor by typing ctor and then clicking tab twice above that we're going to create a property a public property by typing prop tab tab it's going to be of observable collection of type track. Let's import the namespace for the uh, observable collection as well as the track. Actually, it's not track. What was it called? Oh, right. It's going to be item instead of track. So it's going to be uh, item. Uh, we're going to have to import the namespace. There we go. We'll call this songs. Oh, and added it inside the namespace and not the, uh, the actual class. There we go. Inside the constructor, we want to initialize this observable collection. So we'll do songs equals new observ ooh, observable collection of type item. Observable collection of type item. There we go. All right, time to call the actual API and get ourselves some data. So let's create a private function called... Uh, void populate collection should be fine and instead of using http client we're actually going to be using rest client because it's easier to work with in my opinion so we're going to head back into tools new good package manager and browse rest sharp should be the first one select uh, your project install okay close that down and in here we want to create a var client equals rest client and we should be able to import a namespace equals new rest client. There we go. Import a namespace and do client. We'll start by the uh, authenticator. So we got to add the, the bearer, aka the token that we got earlier. We'll do client.authenticator. 
equals new OAuth. This one's going to be pretty long. So o OAuth to authorization request header authenticator. That's a long one. Import the namespace. Open it up. So it's going to be the first one's going to be your actual access token that we saw earlier. And the other parameter is going to be the bearer. Ooh, I can't spell bearer. And in case you're not sure which token it is, it's this one right here. Go ahead and paste that in right there. And it's not use authenticator. It's just authenticator. There we go. Now, keep in mind that this auth token right here will have to be regenerated every like, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. So in case yours stop working, you're just going to have to click get token again, and it should generate a new token for you. All right. So let's continue with the request. So let's do var request equals new rest oh, <laughs> equals new rest request. There we go. And the endpoint that we want to use is this one right here. We want to paste it in right there. Method type is going to be get. There we go. We'll do request add header. First one's going to be accept the normal accept header. It's going to be application slash JSON. We'll add another one. This one's going to be content type. And it's also going to be application JSON. And those are the only uh, headers that you need for this particular endpoint, at least. Then we'll do var response equals, well, client that post async and then the request dot get awaiter dot get result and now we'll do var data equals json convert let's add the namespace deserialize the object into a item and the json data is going to be response dot content now putting a breakpoint right there heading into the main window setting the data context we'll do window dot data context close that off and we'll do main uh, view model close that off alt enter import xml namespace rebuild the project there we go and before running the application we actually want to call this in the constructor here we go f5 to run the application oh right it's not post async it's get async my bad and also make sure to change item to track model there we go now that should be it having a breakpoint right there run the application once we actually hit the breakpoint, we can inspect data, albums, items, and we can see that we have all the items right here, and they all have the data that we need. Right, let's go ahead and add this data to the actual ob observable collection. So we'll do for uh, int i data dot albums dot limit. We'll do var track equals data dot albums dot is it track? Is it items it's items and we'll select the current index that we're iterating through now this doesn't actually have a duration because it's the actual album so we'll go ahead and do this we'll head into the track model and scrolling down to uri we'll do a prop string we'll call it duration there we go heading back into here we can now add that track duration equals i will say like 232 now you can obviously use the same API to call a specific track or a set of tracks in order to get the actual duration of that song as well. And then we'll just do songs, add, and the track. Now here, where for some reason it's a stack panel, it should be a list view. Same properties though. And we'll set the item source. There we go. Binding songs. There we go. Now we can see that we have some some items right here that's because we haven't actually bound the properties in the theme for the image we'll do uh, images it should be images and we'll do uh, the index of two which is the, the third item which should be the 64 by 64 and then we'll do dot uri it should be right as for the text we'll do name capitalize the n and for the description, it's going to be artists. We'll select the first one dot name, rebuild the project, heading into main window, running the project, right? We never actually added the style. So we need to head into app.saml inside the application resources. We'll do uh, resource, uh, 
resource dictionary and then we'll do resource dictionary dot merged dictionaries and in here we'll add a resource dictionary the source is going to be this folder going to mvvm slash actually no it's source is going to be this folder slash theme is it themes or theme theme slash and we can just copy this name right here there we go heading into the main window we can actually set the theme by doing style there we go and we'll do static resource and we have the list style right here oh wow look at that let's run this and see what it looks like so it didn't generate the images which is fine we can actually check into why that is looking at the sample binding failures we can see that this thing right here it couldn't find it let's put our breakpoint right here check the first item that it adds do inspect the track we got images and it should be yeah that should be fine you oh it's url not uri okay that's where the issue is so it's instead of url or uri it's url it should be at least in case i read that wrong we'll see so remove the breakpoint there we go now if you're happy with this then by all means great but we're going to customize the scroll bar as well because i don't really like the look of the default one it doesn't really fit the theme so heading back into the theme once again underneath the style we want to create a new style new style oops style there we go we'll add a key to it there we go we'll call it repeat button transparent target type x target type actually it's x type repeat button in here we'll create a setter we can self close that property background value transparent we'll do a setter oops a setter property template close that we'll do setter dot value close the one as well do a control template target type it's going to be x type repeat button rectangle fill is going to be uh this is a template binding so we'll do um template binding background there we go close that off we can actually copy this one paste it in there we'll call this scroll bar button same target type we'll keep the we can actually remove that part right there we'll keep the property template control template same target type but in here we want to create a border there we go we'll do uh, give it a name border border thickness not brush but border thickness it's going to be one snaps to uh, device pixel we'll set it to true so background is going to be 25 25 25 and border brush is going to be 25 25 25 i'll put the con oh, content presenter right there inside the border that is so we're gonna have to move that right in there there we go and the border brush needs there we go now we can copy this style once again paste it in right there it's going to be of type thumb scroll bar thumb vertical we'll add a setter property override default style value true property template that's fine setter value that's fine control template this one's going to be of target thumb it's going to be a rectangle here we go name this rectangle remove that property right there set of background we'll do fill it's going to be about 42 42 42 the 42 42 42 there we go the width is going to be template bound so template binding width we'll do the same thing for height we'll do height and then change that to height as well now the rectangle can be self-closed and we don't need the content presenter in there all right almost done we just need one more we'll copy this one we'll paste it in right there this one does not need a name target type is going to be scroll bar this one is going to have a few uh, setters so the first one is going to be background we're going to change that to about 25 25 25 border brush is going to have the same value brush there we go we'll do border thickness we'll about one comma zero the width is going to be about 12 height about 12 
We can remove that last one. We'll do property template as usual. Control template is going to be of type scroll bar. You got it. In here, we'll add a grid. We'll say uh, we can actually remove these and we'll do actually we, we, we will keep the snaps to pixel device. Here we go. Let's just make it look a little bit better. We'll open that grid up. We'll do grid dot row definitions and we'll add one row definition. There we go. Self close. Why we actually need to specify row definition is going to make sense in just a sec. Inside the grid, we'll create a border. It's going to be self closed. Do border thickness. We'll do template binding border thickness grid dot row. It's going to be one. Background is going to be uh, template bound. So we'll do template binding background and the border brush. Likewise, we'll do template binding border brush. Now we just got to create the track and we're done. So we'll do track. We'll open that one up. We'll do S direction reversed. We'll set that to true. And we'll do grid dot row one. In here we'll do uh, we'll do track. Oop, uh, track dot thumb. We'll add a style. We'll do dynamic resource scroll bar thumb vertical. If you remember, we had it. Uh, there we go. All right, let's see. Have we missed anything? Let's just double check. Uh, let's, uh, uh, I should. Uh, let's see. The here, height. So let's do min width. All right, rebuild the project, run the application, and there we go. Looking great. Now, if you select something, it highlights it. Amazing. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you have any further questions, if you need help with anything, just join the Discord server. We're super active. We love helping you guys out. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.